Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we're going to do an overview of Google Drive and answer the questions, what is Google Drive and why use it? Google Drive is a cloud computing platform that allows you to create Google Docs, store many different files, and open and share files to anyone and through any device. So what does that really mean in layman's terms? More so that Google Drive allows you to have a digital USB flash drive. So instead of copying files onto a flash drive or thumbstick in order to move files from one computer to another, you can upload and store files on the internet, or as they call it these days, the cloud, so that from the internet you can store files there and then access them from any computer that is connected to the internet. So that is the main aspect of Google Drive. It is online cloud storage, and there's other different companies like Dropbox, like OneDrive, like SugarSync, that all do this online storage. The other aspect, and beneficial feature of Google Drive is that it also has an office suite that is partnered with its online storage. So there is an online text editor, spreadsheet editor, and presentation maker all online as linked to Google Drive and can store files there. And then you can present files directly from Google Drive with this presenter editor or create files from any web browser on any computer connected to the internet. So these are additional value adds to what Google Drive has on top of some of these other online storage companies. Furthermore, there are administration controls for things like Google Apps for Work or Google Apps for Education that allows for large scale deployment, most likely not important to the everyday user. So why use Google Drive? Well, apart from those additional functionalities, some of the biggest benefits of Google Drive revolve around the ability to share and collaborate online. So to think of this from how we'd usually share and collaborate files, previously we would use things like email and we would attach files and then send those files as attachments. Our recipients would download, make edits, and then send them back. So it's a very clunky way of online file collaboration between different people. Where Google Drive allows us to have real-time collaboration where you can easily share files with other users for a period of time, grant them different levels of editing access, whether they can fully edit the document, just comment on specific parts of the document, or even only just view the file. So it's like sending an attachment, but you're giving them more levels of control of the file when they receive it. Furthermore, advantages of using Google Drive's online storage as a way of collaboration is once you've attached a particular file to an email and sent that email, you no longer have control of that file. You don't know if the recipient is going to take that email and send it to another location. So instead, with Google Drive, as it is a hyperlink to the file, you control how long a particular user can see that file by just simply removing or changing the share permissions you've given to that particular user. So even if they forward that email or you no longer want to give them access, you can control the file yourself and say, no, the recipient does not get access to the file. Or even if they've tried to give permissions to someone else, they don't have the ability to do that. So again, it increases security of the particular files online. So these are just a couple reasons to why you may want to use Google Drive as a tool in your office and how to use it is what we're going to get to next. So here we're just going to start with if you're new to Google Drive and you've never seen it before, you want to just have some familiarity with dealing with just the files and uploading and downloading files, we're going to just show how to access Google Drive, how to upload and download files and delete files from Google Drive, as well as to organize them through creating folders on Google Drive and moving your files into those folders. We want to first be able to access Google Drive. So in order to do that, if I open up a web browser or here in New Tab, all I have to do is in Chrome, if in the New Tab, there's already an Apps icon that I can click and then open Google Drive. This is only in Google Chrome when I open a new window or in this case, a new tab. 
However, I might be in something like Internet Explorer where I don't have that same feature in the new tab. So the easiest is for me to navigate to google.com, google.ca, and there there will also be that same icon with the squares, and then I can click on it to open Google Drive. That just makes it another way that I can get to Google Drive. The last way, which I find is the simplest, is in any web browser, just in the address URL, just type drive.google.com and that will immediately take you to the Google Drive application. From there, we just want to go through a simple overview of the interface. There is the Google icon in the top left that may be replaced by your company logo, and beside that is the search where you can search for files, and you can filter by file type, so there's PDFs and documents, as well as open with, but we haven't talked about the Google Doc app, so we'll skip that for now, and ownership, because Google Drive can have files that you yourself has created, or ones that other people have created, and you can separate the two. Then there is the blue search icon, once again the Google App Launcher, where we can see the other Google Apps, then our email address, where usually we go to sign out when necessary. From there, we're just going to go back to the left side. We have our Google Drive icon and My Drive, which expands to the breadcrumb trail if I have different folders. And then this icon, which switches to View. So it currently shows that if I click it, I'll go to the List View. And then if I click it again, I'll go back to the Grid View, which is a larger preview of the file. This is similar to File Explorer, where in the Details view of File Explorer, it looks very similar where I have headers in the file list just as I do in Google Drive in this list view. And as well, there is an icon, so there's extra large, but I'm going to just switch to large, which will look very similar to the grid view in Google Drive, where I have all my files as large squares as opposed to just the text of the particular file. So we see that in this icons, I have an icon for a document, which is similar to the icon of a file in Google Drive. So these are just similarities so that you don't have to have that much of an adjustment. And I just switched it back to list view because that's just my personal preference. You can sort your files. There's a few of them, name last modified and last modified specifically by myself. And I can simply click on the headers and that will also do the sort from that particular characteristics and you'll be able to see a small arrow beside the header itself. There's also a details icon. This, if I have a particular file selected, will show the activity done to the file as well as details. It's like looking at its properties. So I can see the type, I can see its file size, where it's located, and especially also when it's been modified. For non-Google Docs files, there's also an option to prevent viewers from downloading. This is something we'll get to once again when we talk a little bit more about the online collaboration. The settings gear has settings and a download drive option. This download drive option is very similar to other online storages where you can download a program onto your computer and that will sync the files from your online storage to a folder in your computer and anything that you put in that folder will automatically be uploaded and anything that's uploaded onto your online storage will immediately be downloaded onto your computer to keep them in sync. This is strictly an optional feature but it's definitely one that some people like especially if you travel to locations where you do not always have a stable internet connection as well as if you don't want to always have the hassle of having to go online to get your files. Now if you're in a business environment, you do have to caution yourself on first seeing if your technical department is okay with you downloading and installing this particular program, because it does take up a lot of processing and network power in order to keep files synced from online to your computer if everyone in the company is doing it. From there, there's still an option to leave Drive, but there's also keyboard shortcuts, which you can take a look at that allow you to navigate around Google Drive a little bit faster if you'd like keyboard shortcuts. On the left sidebar, there's the My Drive. This is very similar to the File Explorer. If you have the navigational pane open on the left side, you'll be able to expand folders here in your My Drive and navigate with that.
Shared with me will have a list of all the documents that have been shared with you. You can technically find them in my drive. And Google Photos is a new application which links your Google Plus photos to your online storage in Google Drive as well. Recent has files that you've worked on recently and starred just like in Gmail, you can star files to find them in that location. In the trash, where you delete files, and then finally you can see how much storage that you're using. It is a mix of Drive, Gmail, and Google Photos all in that 15 gigabytes. And it does have a link for you to buy more storage if necessary. Some companies do, some companies don't, and it really just depends on your needs, but the pricing for that is quite reasonable. From there, we now want to talk about uploading files to Google Drive. There's the big red new button we avoided. Now we can click it and see that there's file upload. So if I click that, I can now select a file and open it and it will upload to Google Drive. There'll be a status at the bottom right to see that's uploaded. And then if I can't find it, there's a locate pop up at the bottom left as well. But here I can see my file. I'm just gonna close the upload status and then I can see my file, and if I go ahead and double click it, I can see a preview of my file as well. So if I go ahead and double click it, here's the preview. There are some options at the top. I can edit it, but it does open in Google Drive, so we'll talk about that in a later video. I can print this particular file. I can share it, and once again, talk about that another in another video. And then I can also download this particular file onto the computer. So if I was at another location, then I could download it to a different computer and still be able to access it and open it in Word. This particular document, now once it's downloaded, like I'm just going to quickly show, it's just going to open up in Word and we'll be able to uh, see and be able to edit it as necessary inside Word and if needed, re-upload it and so on and so forth. But back here in the file preview, there's just a couple more icons I want to point out. You can close at the top right. Right beside it, there's also a pop-out button. This, if I click on it, will open the file in another tab. And then I can use my original tab to go back to Google Drive and continue to access my files. There's also another icon for details, but we've already gone through details in the list of the Google Drive, so we don't need to go through it again. So from here, I also want to point out that we've uploaded files. We may also want to delete files from our online storage as well. So if I right click, there was the download, but right below it, there's also remove, and this would effectively delete the file online. So if I go ahead, click that, our file is gonna disappear from its current location and it'll appear in the trash. This will also be called the bin if you're using English UK, but I just click the file and then there's a delete forever it'll give me a pop-up and I'll go ahead and confirm the action. Now with Google Drive, files are never automatically deleted from the trash, so you have to do that manually. Another way of uploading a file, which I find super simple to do, is if I had a particular document, I can drag it over Google Drive and I see this blue floating square. Now to see what this blue floating circle, sorry, circle, uh, I can go ahead and just move the window a little bit and I can see that when I hover my mouse over and click and drag a file, it says incoming. If I drop a file here, it'll automatically be uploaded. So I just click and drag and then now my file has uploaded into Google Drive. This is a very simple and fast way to upload files to Google Drive so that they're accessible on the internet. The next thing is that I may want to organize these files into folders. So I click the new button, click folder. I can give a name for the particular folder. And then I can go ahead and hit the create button. From there, organizing files into the folders is the same as in a Windows or Mac computer where I can click and drag files into the particular folder in the file list or the folder in the sidebar. So either or here in the file list or in the left sidebar, I can release the file in any of those locations and I'll move the file to that location. So I go there, I can now see the file and I can click and drag it to the sidebar and I'll do the same thing. I'll now move the file to that particular location. So those are just some simple navigation of uploading, downloading, moving files and creating folders in Google Drive. Hi everyone, thanks again for watching this video. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any additional questions or comments. 
Furthermore, check out some of our related videos or find us in our social media. If you would like email notifications of whenever we release new video or written tutorials, you can go to our webpage technerdservices.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter. We will send to your inbox notifications of those new video and tutorials. Thanks again for watching and until next time, keep teching on.